One of the main trends in modern hip-hop is the rapid turnover of new names. It's not only important to make a name for yourself, but also to stay at the top. One wrong phrase or action can ruin a career that took years to build. From global fame to condemnation and complete cancellation, it's just one step which can irrevocably drag you into a whirlpool of scandals and brand you as a one-hit wonder rapper. It's not only important to maintain your reputation, but also to keep your work relevant. The artist we'll be talking about today had brilliant popularity and fame, but it didn't last long. As many of you may have guessed, we're talking about Lil Pump. In this video, we will explore the career of one of the most promising freshmen of his time, who amassed hundreds of millions of streams and had the audacity to buy and smash a Rolls Royce just for the sake of filming a new video. What led to his downfall and what does Trump have to do with it? Let's begin. Gazi Fabio Garcia was born on August 17, 2000 in Miami, Florida. His parents were from Colombia and divorced when he was six years old. As a child, Garcia was a difficult kid. Fights with classmates and trouble with teachers were common for him. In his teenage years, Gazi Garcia started using illegal substances and almost forgot about school. Eventually, he was expelled during high school. As a kid, Gazi Garcia was most fond of the music of American rappers Chief Keef and Lil B. He knew the lyrics of these artists by heart. Yeah, like I said, Subway Lil B. His passion for their work later greatly influenced his own musical style. When Garcia was 13, his cousin Lil Ominous introduced him to Omar Pinero, better known as Smoke Perp, with whom he later started collaborating. Lil Pump, quote, He told me, Dude, record a song. I refused, and he literally dragged me into the studio. I freestyled. Before that, I didn't even want to do rap. In 2016, his debut single Lil Pump was released on SoundCloud. Mama told me Lil Pump won't be shit. I told a bitch. Within a few days, it gained 10,000 streams. This inspired the young artist to seriously pursue music. Garcia quickly followed this song with singles like Elementary, Ignorant, Gang Shit, and Drumstick. His tracks on SoundCloud brought him instant recognition among representatives of the South Florida underground rap scene in the style known as SoundCloud rap. In 2016, he headlined the No Jumper Tour. He also performed at the Rolling Loud Festival. With his growing popularity and hit releases, Lil Pump also met other rappers such as Triple X Tentacion, Fat Nick, Poya, and Ski Mask, the Slump God. Lil Pump's major rise in popularity came in 2017 when he released his major hits D Rose and Boss. These tracks remain some of the biggest hits of the SoundCloud era. The track D Rose was adapted into a video by Lyrical Lemonade and became his most watched garnering 70 million views in just six months. Today, the video has over 200 million views. The song's lyrics reference the talented basketball player Derek Rose. At 22, Derek Rose was named the most valuable player of the season in the NBA. On June 9, 2017, Garcia signed with Thalites Global and Warner Records just two months before his 17th birthday. The very next day, Lil Pump released another hit, Boss. Yeah, I came in with a saw. Yeah, I came in with a saw. Yeah, bitch, I flare it. The video quickly went viral, and the young artist continued to bask in the spotlight. In July 2017, Garcia planned to release his debut mixtape, but it was delayed. Instead, the track Gucci Gang was released, becoming his first hit on the Billboard Hot 100, reaching the third position. Gucci Gang, 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 Gucci Gang. Spread the rest. The song went triple platinum within a year, and today the video has over a billion views. Public reactions were mixed, seeing a 17-year-old cruising in a Lamborghini with tigers in a palace was strange. His music was frequently criticized for its explicit lyrics and promotion of a negative lifestyle. In October, Garcia released his debut album Lil Pump. On this cover, Lil Pump is depicted on a jet ski with his yellow Porsche in the water, which he crashed the day after buying it. The album featured Smoke Perp, Gucci Mane, Lil Yachty, Chief Keef, and 2 Chains. Yeah. The album debuted at number 3 on the Billboard 200 chart, with 46,000 copies sold in its first week. After it became known that the artist had terminated contracts with the labels The Lights Global and Warner Records, because he had been underage at the time of signing, a bidding war ensued between labels to sign Garcia. It was reported that offers ranged from $8 million to $12 million and beyond. Artists like Gucci Mane and DJ Khaled showed significant interest. In February 2018, Garcia fueled rumors that he had signed with Gucci Mane's label One 017 Records. However, on March 12th, he re-signed with his former label for $8 million. On April 13th of the same year, 
Pump released the single Eskeet It, which debuted at number 24 on the Billboard Hot 100. The video caused a massive public stir. Many didn't understand who he was to smash a Rolls Royce and scatter huge stacks of money just for a beautiful shot, but Lil Pump could afford a lot. Huge amounts of money, fast cars, and expensive clothes became a norm for the artist. That same summer, Garcia was featured in the annual Double XL Freshman Cipher. In July of that year, he released the single Drug Addicts, along with a music video featuring actor Charlie Sheen. Chill, chill, baby. On September 7, 2018, Garcia collaborated with Kanye West and comedian Adele Givens on the track I Love It. The track immediately took the number one spot on the Canadian Hot 100. This unusual duo talked about their intimate preferences. The song and its accompanying music video were presented at the Pornhub Awards ceremony in Los Angeles, California, where Kanye served as co-creative director for the event. On August 10th, 2018, Kanye gave an interview on Jimmy Kimmel Live. Toward the end of the interview, Kimmel asked Kanye if the birth of his daughters had changed his view on women, to which he replied, no, I still watch Pornhub. Do you feel like your attitude towards women has changed since having daughters? Nah, I still look at Pornhub and... <laughs> 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 After the interview aired, Pornhub reached out to Kanye via Twitter, granting him a lifetime premium subscription in appreciation for his support. This sequence of events led to a professional partnership between the two, evidenced by Kanye's involvement in the 2018 Pornhub Awards. Yo, LA, put your hands up, make some On August 19, 2018, Kanye attended 2 Chainz's wedding, wearing a suit and Yeezy slides that were too small. Many people on the internet mocked the Yeezy slides, and Kanye responded by posting a photo of himself in extremely oversized slides. Those slides ended up being featured in the music video for the song. The song and music video were hugely successful, gathering over 76 million views in the first week, making it the biggest global debut for a hip-hop video on YouTube. In the first four weeks, it amassed 210.2 million views. I Love It reached number 6 on the Billboard Hot 100. Becoming Kanye's biggest hit since 2015's 4-5 Seconds, which peaked at number 4. His second chart-topping song in 2018 was Yikes, which debuted and peaked at number 8. Tweaking, tweaking off that 2CB According to Pump, his verse for this song was recorded in just 15 minutes during his 18th birthday celebration, and the explicit chorus of the song was Kanye's idea. I Love It eventually made it onto Garcia's 2019 album Harvard Dropout. In August 2018, Garcia announced a tour in support of his then unreleased album Harvard Dropout, but a month later, the tour was cancelled due to unforeseen circumstances. On October 5th, he released Multimillionaire as a single featuring Lil Uzi Vert. On October 25th, dubstep producer Skrillex released the song Arms Around You in collaboration with Lil Pump. In Arms Around You, other artists sing about embracing the woman they love. However, Lil Pump's verses stray from this theme as he raps about his wealth, drug use, and polygamous lifestyle. Butterfly dose, space, space cool blood like a UFO. This track became one of the last successful songs in the rapper's career. On December 16th, 2018, Garcia was accused of racism towards Asians after a clip of his new song was released. The lyrics contained Asian stereotypes and slurs, including Ching Chong. This led to significant negative media coverage and prompted Chinese rappers to release diss tracks against him. On December 24th, he posted an apology video on Instagram for the incident and later released the single with the offensive lyrics removed. Quote, I saw what happened or something like that. I want to apologize and I'm ashamed of that post. It was not my intention to hurt anyone or anything. I have Asian friends. I love everyone. Love. I wish everyone a Merry Christmas. Lil Pump addressed his followers. On February 21st, 2019, Garcia released the song Be Like Me featuring Lil Wayne. A music video with both artists was also released. Everybody wanna be like me. Ooh. Yeah. Everybody wanna be like me. That same year, he made Forbes's 30 Under 30 list. On February 13th, 2020, Garcia posted on his Instagram story, I'm not making music anymore, I quit. 
He did not elaborate further. However, a few days later, he posted on the same platform. Y'all thought I was gone, but I'm back and introduced a new song. He also announced that Lil Pump 2 would be the title of his upcoming album. However, by that time, Lil Pump's music no longer gained the same level of popularity. The artist was criticized for producing repetitive tracks and hypermasculine lyrics, and the accusations of racism after the track Butterfly Doors played a significant role as well. On September 16th, 2020, Garcia released a new single, Life Like Me, on his SoundCloud account. The song was first introduced in 2018. This brings us to a topic related to Donald Trump. Trump. Later in 2018, Garcia released several exclusive tracks on SoundCloud, including Lil Pump Big Maga Steppin. The most observant might have noticed the Make America Great Again hat on the artist. This political slogan, popularized by Donald Trump during his 2016 presidential campaign, became part of American culture. On October 26, 2020, Garcia endorsed President Donald Trump's campaign in the 2020 US presidential election, criticizing Joe Biden's tax plan as a key argument. Biden's plan targeted the wealthiest individuals in society, promising not to raise taxes for those earning less than $400,000. He planned to increase the federal income tax rate from 37% to 39.6% and the corporate tax rate from 21% to 28%. The artist posted a short video where he told Sleepy Joe to screw off and expressed his support for Trump. All I gotta say is Trump 2020, I look like paying an extra 33 in tax for Biden, Sleepy Joe, Trump 2020, Lil Pump's support for Trump divided his fans into two camps. They argued and left nearly 15,000 comments within five hours. One fan wrote, Time to unfollow and forget about you again. While another added, That day I lost all respect for you. Others said, Yes, you're cancelled. And wrote, Haha, thanks, but no thanks. Biden 2020 Lil Pump became the latest rapper to endorse Trump after 50 Cent, who also voiced support for the Republican candidate. 50 Cent also supported Trump due to Biden's proposed tax increases on the wealthiest. However, he later seemed to change his mind, stating that he never liked Trump. Besides 50 Cent, other rappers also endorsed Trump, such as Ice Cube. Kanye West also appeared to support Trump earlier, as he was seen wearing a Make America Great Again hat, but later ran for president himself. West later compared the negative backlash he received to racial prejudice, as people expected him to be a Democrat. In a March interview, he said, It reminded me of how I felt being a black guy before I became famous. When I walked into a restaurant, people looked at me like I was about to steal something. This is your place, Kanye. Don't talk about clothing. This is your place, Kanye. You're black, so you're a Democrat. It later became known that Kanye only received 60,000 votes. His candidacy was presented in only 12 states, with his best result in Tennessee. He received more than 10,000 votes, or 0.3% of the total. He announced plans to run for president again in 2024, but as we know, he didn't pursue another attempt. Later, Lil Pump posted on social media wearing a Trump campaign baseball cap with Make America Great Again. On November 2nd, Trump invited Lil Pump to speak at his rally in Michigan, mistakenly calling him Lil Pimp meaning Little Pimp. Lil Pump also publicly supported Trump in the election campaign. And speaking of sound, music, and other things, one of the big superstars of the world, Little Pimp. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> How's it going? Do you want to come up and say something? Do you want to? Come on. Little Pump, come on. Come on up here. Come on up here. Does everyone know who he is? Do uh, you know how big he is? Come on up here. <laughs> That's a nice hat. Come on, say something. Hello, everybody. How are you, you guys feeling? I come here to say, Mr. President, I appreciate everything you've done for our country. You brought the troops home, and you're doing the right thing. MAGA 2020. 20. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. And do not vote for Sleepy Joe at all. Despite this endorsement, it was later revealed that Garcia wasn't registered as a voter. It also turned out that Garcia deleted his 2016 tweet saying, Screw Donald Trump, after it went viral on Twitter. In an interview, Garcia mentioned that the day after supporting Trump on social media, Trump gifted him a private jet and thanked him for his support. Same day, Trump called me like, yo, I'm about to get you a jet. 
Come over here, Terrell. He just had you pull up. Yes. In 2020, Garcia managed to collaborate with the most popular Russian rapper Morgenstern. The first hints of the track appeared in December 2019, when Morgenstern urged his listeners on Instagram to ask for a collab with Lil Pump. Almost six months later, rumors about this collaboration resurfaced, with speculations that the track might be Ice, but this didn't happen. The rumors went to absurd lengths. During an interview, Morgenstern refused to show his conversation with the artist, fueling theories that the feature might have been bought. However, the track was eventually released. The track was produced by the famous Russian producer Slava Marlow. A year ago, Lil Pump appeared at Morgenstern's concert and performed their joint hit. Many considered his connection with the Russian performer part of his collaboration with Trump, speculating it was a politically motivated move. The negative impact of Lil Pump's political activity on his career became evident for several reasons. First, audience division. His open support for Donald Trump caused backlash among some fans who disagreed with his political views. This led some of them to boycott his music and projects. Secondly, media and public criticism. Lil Pump's social media performances and statements were often harshly criticized, which could have hurt his reputation. Some journalists and bloggers criticized him for lacking deep thought and analysis in political matters. Also, Lil Pump's political stance occasionally created tension in collaborations with other musicians who had opposing views. This limited his opportunities for collaborations and participation in joint projects. Political activity makes an artist more vulnerable to changing public sentiment. If their opinions are viewed as outdated or unpopular, it can lead to a decline in interest in their music. Like many other foreign rappers, Garcia had legal trouble. On February 15, 2018, Garcia was arrested for firing a gun. According to his manager, three men tried to break into his house in San Fernando Valley around 4 p.m. after which they shot at the door. Police later discovered that the shot may have been fired from inside the house. They returned with a search warrant and found an unloaded gun under a balcony and ammunition elsewhere in the house. As a result, Garcia's mother was charged with endangering a minor and keeping an unsecured firearm in the house. On August 29, 2018, Garcia was arrested for driving without a license in Miami. On September 3rd, he announced that he would go to jail for a few months for violating his probation related to that arrest. However, on September 29th, he appeared live on TV. In October 2018, Garcia's manager told Billboard that Garcia had served a jail sentence but did not elaborate. On December 4, 2018, Garcia was arrested by Danish police after a performance in Copenhagen for drug possession. He was fined $800. Later, in a live stream, he showed his middle finger to the police officer during the arrest. As a result, he was banned from entering the country for two years. On December 13, 2018, Garcia was arrested at Miami airport for disorderly conduct while preparing to board a plane. Security wanted to search Garcia's luggage for substances, but Garcia insisted he didn't have any. Although no substances were found, Garcia became angry angry during his encounter with the police and began loudly arguing with security officers, he was later taken into custody. In November 2021, the IRS seized his home in Miami for failing to pay taxes amounting to $1.6 million. On August 12th, 2021, the track Racks to the Ceiling featuring Canadian rapper Tori Lanez was released. Racks all the way to the ceiling, racks all the way to the ceiling, ooh, you. On December 14th, 2021, Garcia and producer Ronnie J quietly released a new album titled No Name. Unlike Garcia's previous release, Harvard Dropout, the new album was never mentioned on social media, leading to its commercial failure. At the same time, the artist's style had not changed for several years, which inevitably bored even the most loyal fans of Garcia. In 2022, the artist bought a Porsche only to crash it, despite his popularity being far from its peak and stunts like this not being able to revive it. On April 12, 2022, Garcia released the title single for Lil Pump 2 called All the Sudden. All of a sudden throwing 50s and 100s. Ooh. In March 2023, Pump announced the cover and tracklist for his long-awaited second studio album Lil Pump 2, featuring guest appearances from Smoke Perp, Young Boy Never Broke Again, Ty Dolla Sign, and others. The album was released on March 17th. Despite more active promotion on social media, the album once again failed commercially and did not chart anywhere. Bitches in the fist fight. 
the artist's subsequent career was marked by complete failure. Garcia barely made any attempts to regain his former glory or modernize his style. His flow had already become tiresome to fans by 2018, after the release of Gucci Gang. His primary source of popularity after releasing hits relied on provocative behavior on social media and a lavish lifestyle. Some sources suggest that his extravagant spending may have impacted his financial situation. His active political engagement also played a significant role. It's clear to anyone that politics is a touchy subject, especially if you're a high-profile artist. Even the most loyal fans can turn on you at any moment. Everything can depend on a single statement. This is what happened to Garcia, who was never particularly cautious with his words and actively expressed his political stance. Garcia continued to support Trump in 2024. In August of this year, as part of Trump's presidential campaign, Garcia announced plans to perform a diss track against Kamala Harris at a Trump rally, although he later backed out of the idea and announced that he would write a song in support of Donald Trump instead. He also vowed to leave the United States if Harris won the 2024 US presidential election. Additionally, Garcia tweeted angry messages at Taylor Swift, who had actively supported the Democratic candidate. His fan base will never be the same, and his popularity fades with each controversial statement or action. Many fans are asking for the return of the old Lil Pump, the mischievous teenager jumping on the roof of a Rolls Royce and buying every new item from Gucci. However, it is more likely that this era is long gone. At the height of his fame, Garcia stood out with his extraordinary persona, but nowadays such antics no longer impress anyone. Undoubtedly, Lil Pump gave many of us a fun, carefree time, and his listeners appreciated that, despite the potential backlash from the mainstream. Now the artist has completely disappeared from the radar and only appears at commercial events and shows. His streaming numbers are held up by past hits and nostalgia for 2018. He failed to achieve a second breakthrough and newer, more stylish artists who are a step ahead of the outdated minimal trap sound have taken over. There's no need to expect anything from Lil Pump now, as he can be classified among those rappers who are already in the past. And that's all. Share your opinions in the comments about Lil Pump and be sure to tell us your thoughts on his career decline. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.